Maps are the best. I keep repeating this in videos, but I really think it's true. I could look at almost any type of map for such a long time without getting tired of it. And the reason why is that when you look at a map, you're always learning, regardless of what the map is about. It presents you with some type of data regarding the depicted territory. So in this video, we're going to do exactly that and use around 10 maps to learn some interesting pieces of information about the United States. There's an infinite amount of data maps we can use in a situation like this, I chose 10 that I came across online and that I found particularly interesting, allowing us to draw some specific conclusion from them. They are also unrelated to each other. A quick disclaimer, I got these maps off Reddit, Instagram and other places online. Remember there might be some inaccuracies. Let's start with the two on the thumbnail. First, house prices. Looking at this map, we realize that houses seem to be much more expensive in the western part of the United States. This surprised me, I knew urban centers were very expensive in the west, but I assumed altogether the east coast states had a higher cost of living. Apparently this isn't exactly the case. California seems to be the most expensive state overall, maybe only Connecticut rivals it. Although this map is divided by counties, which allows us to get a grasp of the different realities within the same state. This is especially interesting in the east coast, in places like Florida, New York, Pennsylvania, or Virginia, where the vast majority of the state is much cheaper when compared to the main urban centers. The whole state of New York is much cheaper than the Manhattan area, known for its ridiculous housing prices, and the same happens for instance in Tennessee. I was surprised by some of the most expensive places, honestly, I had no idea that Colorado was also expensive, Hawaii was more expected. An interesting map associated with this one is the next, which points out the salary you need to afford the average home in each state. This presents an interesting comparison with the previous map because it takes into account another important aspect in house purchases salaries. If in a given state prices are super cheap but the salaries are super low then maybe they end up having a worse housing situation than a super expensive state that has medium high salaries. Colorado stands out again as one of the worst here but none beat California. In five states you need a salary of over $90,000 a year to purchase the average home. California, Colorado, New York, Hawaii and Massachusetts. Washington, Oregon and Utah are the next higher level. The best relation between house prices and salaries seems to be in Ohio and West Virginia, then Montana, Idaho, and Nevada, along with Virginia, Connecticut, and Florida, which range between 70 and 80,000. Texas, Minnesota, Arizona, Alaska, North Carolina, Delaware, New Jersey, Vermont, and New Hampshire are in the halfway mark on the scale. Texas surprised me, I thought it would be higher up. And then in yellow and green, we have the places where lower salaries will be able to buy your house, under the terms pointed out in the title of the map. Then we have the second map on the thumbnail, Forest Area. This map surprised me for two reasons. One, I always knew the US had a lot of desert, but I didn't expect this whole wide area in the middle to be so empty of forest. The high degree of vegetation in the west coast was expected, but it also surprised me the east coast areas are so densely full. This is the area of the US that's most inhabited, and usually more humans equals less nature. I'm glad to see this isn't the case. There are some conflicting maps about this though, although I think the key differences lie in one being a map of virgin forest, meaning naturally occurring, and the other including all, meaning also the ones that were planted by humans. This series of three maps, one from 1620, the other from 1850 and the last from 1926 shows us how devastated the virgin forest of the US has been, with the majority of it disappearing and being cut down. The areas roughly coincide in all the maps, with the desert areas always being there. Is the first map accurate in representing forests today? Let me know in the comments. Now before we keep going, a quick message from today's sponsor, Masterworks. By now we've studied the economies of countries all over the world and we know some events transcend time and location. In the last few years alone, we've seen some old villains resurface. Pandemics, wars, inflation, market crashes, it's like a terrifying crossover episode. Times like these are confusing and scary, but we can try to weather the storm with a few lessons from the past. In a previous video, I talked about precious metals and how gold became a popular store 
of wealth as a commodity, a physical asset, which can retain or gain value, even in times of economic downturn. But there's another asset that has been historically valued due to similar factors, fine art. You probably know that rich people have collected art for centuries. It's not just a decoration, but an interesting investment. In fact, the last time inflation was near its current levels, between 1973 and 81, art prices appreciated at an average rate of 17.5% per year. Until recently, only the very rich investors have been able to invest in art, but thanks to Masterworks, almost anyone can invest without buying an entire million dollar painting. I can't stress this enough, this isn't an NFT, this is a real museum quality Art. By legendary artists like Picasso, Monet, and Banksy, Masterworks buys the paintings up front, qualifies them with the SEC, allowing investors like you and I to invest in shares of a painting. In their last 9 exits, Masterworks has delivered net returns over 13.9% to their investors. Nearly 600,000 people have signed up so far, and offerings have sold out quickly so there's a waitlist, but my subscribers can gain priority access and skip it through the link in the description. Now, back to the video. Oddly enough, the forced coverage doesn't seem to affect or create any associated trend in the presence of animal predators, which is what this map shows us, the largest land predator by US state. Most of the south has the American alligator as the largest, while Florida has the American crocodile. I for one didn't even know the US had crocodiles, I thought it was only alligators, and assumed that only Florida and Louisiana had them. Most of the continental US have the black bear as their largest predator. It's important to point out this is the largest and not the most common or most dangerous. If you have the coyote, Nebraska the mountain lion, and three others the grizzly bear. In Alaska it's the polar bear, and in Hawaii it's the domestic cat, a very big threat. We essentially conclude that there are few states in the US where some type of bear isn't the biggest predator. This next map is old, it's from 1942, and it shows us the resources of the United States. It mixes extracted but also produced resources, so it's a little confusing, but it's interesting to see what came from where at the time. It doesn't specify a lot, for instance, all the ores are grouped up, but we get to see how mineral extraction was somewhat common throughout the entire territory, and also point out a few regional tendencies. The northwest and northeast seem to be the main origins of timber, while the south was where all the cotton came from, with grain being more common further north. California seemed to be the only state where fruit was produced, and sheep and pigs were mostly produced in the middle western area. Of course this is now incredibly outdated, the closest version of this map that I could find was this one. It shows us the most profitable industry per state. The middle west of the country still has meat as its biggest industry, which shows perhaps animal farming is still prevalent. Surprisingly, a lot of states have aerospace as their most profitable sector, maybe this includes air travel, with even more having mechanics and machinery. Extraction is also fairly common, like in Texas and automotive too. Maine stands out by being the only continental state in which fishing is number one, only Alaska also has it, just like Massachusetts with precision instruments, whatever that is, or Wyoming with chemicals. A lot has changed between the 20 and 21st centuries, but it's cool to see how some connections in industries still exist in specific states, as well as how much things have changed. Another map that shows us different categories per state is this one, which tells us the most common restaurant cuisine in each state. I guess it takes the number of registered restaurants, categorizes them by type of food, and then shows us which is more common, if it is accurate. Mexican food seems to be the most common in the southwest, while pizza is most common in the northeast, although Italian in general is also big in New York and around it. Maine has seafood, makes sense if they fish so much, as does Louisiana. Asian is very common in Washington and Alaska apparently, while a lot of northern states have pub, I'm not really sure what this means, maybe some English influence, and Hawaii has Hawaiian food as the most common. It's interesting to see how the presence of specific immigrant communities may impact the results in some states. The east coast having so many Italian heritage families likely causes their choice of restaurants, as must be the case with Mexican ones in the south closer to the border with Mexico. Fast food however does break this trend in a few states. These are places that sell food and when you buy something you have to pay a sales tax. That was a good transition, right? Here is a map that shows us the sales tax percentage by county in the US. I'm not sure if the gray ones are 0%, 
I highly doubt it, or if there was just missing information. Again, if you know, let me know in the comments. It's weird to see how inside the same country, the tax rate can vary so much. Although, I guess we need to remember the US is a federal state, and they're almost a group of countries together, so it makes some sense that they each have their own laws. In Europe, I don't think any countries have different tax rates for different areas within themselves, even in federal countries like Germany, for instance, but let me know if I'm wrong about this. These southern states seem to be the highest here in red, although Arizona and California, as well as Washington, have high percentages too. New York seems to be the only East Coast state where they're higher, and Maine seems to be the lowest along with Alaska and Hawaii. This isn't necessarily bad, I guess it depends on your point of view about taxes. Also, the percentage isn't as important as the base cost of the products. And differences in counties are infinite. The most obvious one is the size of them in terms of area. Counties in the east coast of the US are much smaller, while as you move west, they become larger, mostly because they are less populated and more filled with nature, even if it's desert. Some bigger states maybe have 10 to 15 counties, while small ones reach up to 30. The east of the US was colonized first, and so its history goes further back, having had more time to grow and develop. This, along with other factors, led to more people settling there. The biggest explanation for this difference really is population density, as we can see here on this other map. But there are some exceptions. This shows us how 144 counties have more population, over half of the country's total, than the remaining 2,998, which really goes to show how concentrated the population is. Although it does put into question the argument I just made, a lot of these more populated counties are in the west and they have large sizes. So why aren't they separated or organized into smaller ones? Perhaps the answer to the question lies more in the time in which the eastern states were created and organized earlier in history in comparison to the later establishment and territorial organization of the western and center ones. And finally, this map shows us every place in the US that has had or has a woman in Congress. Some have had at least one woman in the House of Representatives, others have had at least one in the Senate, and some have had them in both houses of the US Congress. Although it's interesting to see how some have had neither, it's really surprising to find that some states, the ones in gray, have had very few women to represent them politically. Mississippi and Vermont, for instance, have never had either according to this map. A very shocking discovery for me if this is accurate. So, those are a few, in my opinion, super interesting maps that teach us some super interesting pieces of information and statistics about the United States. Did any of these surprise you? Let me know in the comments, along with any other statistics you'd like to see in another video like this, either for the United States or another country or even continent. Thanks so much for watching this video, subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.